Welcome to another episode of Listen to Us Rant About Movies. I'm Wes Ford. And I'm Zach Harris. What we like to do is we rant about movies and we drink while we do it. For this episode, we'll be discussing what we've been watching, followed by separate spoiler and non-spoiler segments of our review of Blade Runner 2049. Tonight, I am drinking a porter called Green Man. What are you drinking, Zach? I am drinking a orange cream ale, a nitro, by Breckenridge Brewery in Colorado. I guess mine is from Legendary Ales. Not sure where they're from. Uh, oh, Asheville. Asheville, North oh, nice, Carolina. Nice. And uh, let's give a little sip then. Let's get a little sip going there, bud. Cheers. Hmm. Hmm. Mine has a. It's pretty good. A very, very strong coffee flavor to oh, it. Oh yeah. yeah, Joe heavy. Is good. Nice. Very Joe heavy. <laughs> little chocolate. It's good. Oh yeah. I'm not usually a porter boy, but mm-hmm. I, I like this one. It's good. I like a nice porter every now and again. It's got to be you like cold the out though, you know. Yeah, hasn't been cold here, but. Yeah. It's fine. It's still pretty tasty. For not sure. too heavy. It's got like this guy with uh, leaves around his around his face. It's the <laughs> green man. Nice, nice. Classy so. boy. How's yours tasting? It's good. I like it. It's a little lighter than I thought it would be. Um, hmm. Definitely sweet. Uh, I like it. I don't know how many I could drink subsequently because it's also a tall boy. But oh uh, yeah. Definitely tasty, that's for sure. I like the cream ales. Yeah, I do too. I'm a big fan. Definitely enjoy it. Awesome. If you like what you hear, remember you can find other episodes of our podcasts on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, and YouTube. Also, please consider giving us a rating on iTunes or Apple Podcasts. They really do help with exposing us to a wider audience. Um, so we'll start with our first item, which is we're going to start with our watch lists. Zach, why don't you go ahead and kick it off? All right. So watched a lot since the last cast. Surprising amount, actually. I'm forgetting about a lot of these. Um, I guess probably pick pick your top four, I'd say the probably the, uh, I watched, I saw the Florida project, um, which I bought. I bought tickets for it this week. Oh, nice! So I'm, yeah, I'm very excited. Yeah, nice, nice. Yeah, it's uh, it was great. I liked it a lot. I have uh, I have a little bit of a weird feeling about the ending, but other than that, I uh, I really, really enjoyed it. It was a great, great movie. Um, I really liked Tangerine, uh, his last movie, and uh, yeah. Yeah, just just a great one. Just great performances and uh, looks nice. Good locations. I'm sure you'll like seeing it. You know, seeing all the hot spots. I don't really remember. There wasn't that much I like recalled. You know, from my yeah. time there. But you'll probably. As I, I from what I've heard, it's it was shot pretty much in the super touristy areas. Mm-hmm. Kind of the downhill area. Well, I haven't been too much over there, but um. I, I recognize some of the locations even from the trailer. So. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I'm excited for you to see it. Excited to hear your thoughts. Yeah, man. Maybe we'll do a, like a longer review of it. Yeah. At some I'm point. Um, yeah, I'm real excited to see it. I know a few people who worked on it too. Oh, nice. Very cool. Um, so it should be interesting. Um, cool. And yeah, you said you liked it and... Um, I'm curious to hear what you think about the ending, what you're saying there. Like yeah. You, you're not too crazy about the ending? Yeah, it's just, something. uh, I, it, it, didn't, it didn't feel earned to me, I guess. But, mm. um, I, I, like, see what they were going for, and I think it, it just would have been an easy fix to earn it. But, I don't know, yeah. it sounds weird. Like, we, we'll, we'll talk about it once, once you've seen it, you know. Fair enough. Tell, let you know what I mean, don't want to spoil nothing, you know what I mean? Yeah, I gotcha, I gotcha. Um, my first item, uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm. Oh yeah, new, new season. season. New season. 
Have you watched any of this? I did. I, I haven't watched the one from last night, but I watched the, yeah. the previous one. Well, I'll tell you, I... Okay, well, first off, I really liked the first episode. It was like mm. good old classic Larry. He's back. Like, nothing's changed. I really enjoyed it. Not a big fan of the second episode. Yeah? Yeah, like, I feel like... I don't know, like, it's almost lost its touch by the time it got to the second episode a little bit. See, I kind of felt that uh, way about the first one. I definitely thought it was funny. but And I didn't think it was, like, bad. But it just, like, it wasn't... Uh, to me, it wasn't, like, the slam run. The slam run. The home run. Uh, <laughs> the home run slam dunk that I was thinking it would be. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, the last two seasons were so good. Yeah, they were just consistently great the whole time that it's... Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Just yeah, didn't, didn't juice me up that much. I was into it. Thought it was funny, but I, I definitely enjoyed the first one, and probably even more now that I know that I didn't like the second one that much. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, I'm gonna keep watching it. I love this show. Uh, it's so funny to me. It's one of my favorite shows. But um, I just the second one just yeah, kind of lost its edge a little bit. Like what some of the stuff that he was writing and he like put on this character and it it just lost its touch. It wasn't that funny near the end of the episode, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so I hope it improves from here. Um, but other than that, still a good show. Love Larry David. He's hilarious, and yeah. I'm glad that there's a new season. Totally, it's great. I'm waiting for it. I'll watch all of it. You know, I did think. Oh, yeah. um, I thought Leon was really funny. Uh, JB yeah. Smoove, he's always really funny. And I thought the I really liked the scene with uh, Richard Lewis where they see each other from across the restaurant, like gesture <laughs> over. Like that's a yeah. classic thing, you know what I mean? It's great. Yeah. You, you come, yeah, you come, come here. You come here. Come on. <laughs> Halfway. Like, I took a few more steps. <laughs> it was real good. Oh, I just love the. the it's so funny, just like the first world problems of larry david oh, you know totally. just like the simple things of like not getting your shampoo out of the bottle you know mm-hmm. <laughs> like, totally so funny uh but yeah if you if you enjoyed any of the other curb your enthusiasms then you'll like the new one i think um yeah worth a watch for I, sure yeah it's only two episodes out so we'll see where it goes what else you got on your list um i got Let's see. I watched um, the Blob, the, uh, the Blob, the, the remake, the, oh, 80s the remake. '80s remake. I watched the original last month, um, and it was like fun, but is is a little long. It's a little not enough Blob. Still a fun yeah. movie though. Still definitely good, but uh, well, Snip Snip might have been nice. I've only seen the. Original. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't seen the remake. Gotta check the remake. Yeah. It's amazing. It's, it's worth f- it? It's real good. It's, uh, <laughs> the effects are great, and it's it's a pretty, like, classic uh, setup, you know, for everything. Yeah. It's very much, like, a, what you would expect out of, like, a 80s version of The Blob. But nice. at the same time, I feel like they play with your expectations well. And almost like, mm-hmm. like dodge the tropes, like they like set them up, almost so you have like an expectation, and then they like deviate sure. from it, which is nice. They kind of they kind of subvert the formula that. a little bit, and uh, I like that. Yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. I, I really enjoyed it. It's it's a really really fun movie. Nice. With some That's great effects, just killer effects, you know. Just fucking killer, man. Just fucking killing it over there. <laughs> I watched a um, a movie on Netflix called A Dark Song. Okay, I feel like I've maybe seen some for it's that. It's gotten it's gotten some buzz. Uh-huh. Uh, I think it technically was from last year, but it's considered a 2017 film. Okay. And um, I went through the festival circuit. It's an Irish film, and the premise itself is very interesting, which is why I wanted to watch it. Um, it's basically about this woman who hires an occultist to do this ritual 
um, for a reason that I want I don't want to give away. Mm-hmm. Basically, like an occultic um, ritual, kind of like demon worship and like yeah. uh, dark magic, for for a means to an end. Um, but the part of the ritual is he has to have a uh, have an end goal as well. They have to work together to do this ritual. And it's like they so it, it, it follows them going through this ritual over like a month. They shut themselves out from the world and like live in this house and just live together. Uh-huh. They start out as strangers and like you see the process of them going through this like very rigorous ritual, like this magic yeah. ritual. Um and it starts out starts out really cool, really interesting. And then like it gets to like near the end of the movie and it completely lost me. Like it, yeah, I didn't like it at all at that point. Bummer. What happens from the ritual just like completely doesn't pay off and it just loses itself. Like I don't, I don't know. It's hard to describe without without ruining it. But the ride to that point was great, and then near the end it just didn't work for me, and yeah. I completely made me dislike the movie after that so i feel like that's been the case with a lot of stuff like in that realm you know that yeah. i've seen recently it's like all these movies that are really good to a point and then it just like drops the ball yeah the end is shame. actually end is actually bad like it's a bad ending yeah and it's just ugh, why you had a good run there for a sec bummer um, town man but yeah there were some good elements to it I like movies that deal with like, I like Satan worship movies. I like uh, cultic movies. Um, so, if you like that, you might you might enjoy it. But yeah, just the ending didn't work. And I think it's a cool experiment to start out with because you've never seen that side before, right? Like you yeah. only see like, like you only see the characters who run in on the uh, the ritual. Mm-hmm. You don't see the people who are like doing the ritual. You know? Which yeah, is totally. Really- cool uh side of the story i had never seen before so yeah that's a dark song that's on netflix i'd give it two stars just two star huh yeah bummer 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 what about you um i went and saw the new remaster of suspiria at the Regal. Yeah, the Regal of all places near me Whoa. was showing it. And I was like, what? Is that the Regal? Like, what the hell? And I went, it was $5. I'm like, I'm seeing Suspiria at a Regal for $5 right now? What's going on? It's really weird. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. But, um, oh, but yeah, that thing just looked so good. That remaster is fucking amazing. That's awesome, dude. Yeah, it was great to see in the theater. Um, just looking cherry, looking super clean, and uh, hadn't seen it in a couple years, and it's just a real solid movie. I really like it a lot. Um, nice. I haven't seen it in a long time, I think, since I saw it with you, actually. Yeah. When you lived down here, mm-hmm. the last time I saw it. It's a good It's a good uh, October rewatch. Maybe work it into your... Uh, yeah. You know? It's a total October movie. Yeah, it's great, though. And I've, I've been watching a lot of Argento just because I think a lot, of, a lot of new, like, Blu-rays and stuff have been coming out of his movies that I just don't have those movies, you know? So I've, yeah. been, I've been picking a lot of those up, so I've been re-watching a lot of his stuff, and it's just, it's just like, clearly his best movie. You know what I mean? Like, watching <laughs> oh, it again yeah, is sure. just, like, leaps and bounds above all his other ones, and uh, <laughs> it's just, it's just fantastic. So cherry. Oh, yeah. Next on my list, I've got... I watched the documentary, the documentary um, Gaga, 5 Foot 2. It's Lady Gaga's... About, oh, yeah. The Gaga? <laughs> documentary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, on Netflix. Um, I am not, like, a Lady Gaga fan by any means, but I do enjoy documentaries, and this seemed interesting. Uh, it's mainly about her dealing with she has like constant pain like she has constant body pains Mm -hmm. and it it is a medical condition but my biggest problem with the documentary is like she just talks about having the pain and like you see her deal with the pain and like gruesome not gruesome but like you feel bad for her 
and you can tell that she's in the, all this pain, but they don't go into what it is. Like I, like I wanted to know like what was causing it and like what, yeah, yeah like what was causing it. What what was the sickness? Like I know you could look it up online, but like I want you to tell me and like yeah, it seems talk kind about, of an incomplete like, talk about part it. of the documentary if they yeah it's about that, but they don't talk about it at all. Yeah, they don't even weird. talk about it really, but they're making it about that. And that's mm-hmm. like what the trailers tell you it's about. But um yeah, it follows her going through this condition and then her leading up to her performance at the Super Bowl. Mm. Um so it was interesting to see like the side stuff. Again, I was I'm not like a Lady Gaga fan, but she is extremely talented and that you got to respect. Like she is super musically talented and you can see that can see that if you watch this documentary mm-hmm. um it's decently well done i had a lot of problems with like the sound and the camera work the, ca- the camera work was very lazy to me it was it was like cell phones it wasn't yeah. actually cell phones but it like how they handled the cameras it they were kind of just like hit record and just like yeah. and i know that you're sometimes when you're in the moment especially like with a celebrity you just gotta like get what you can get but Excuse it just didn't have a lot of talent behind the camera I got gotcha. you. Like it was just, uh, just like you could shoot it a little better than this. Yeah, yeah, know. totally. Um, but yeah, other than that, it's pretty okay. Um, worth a watch if you find that interesting. Mm-hmm. That's uh, that's on Netflix. It's called Gaga Five Foot Two. Um, what's so the much good stuff on Netflix? What's the uh, meaning of the title? I don't know. I guess that's how tall she is. I. <laughs> Just didn't know if that like played in somehow or at all. No, no, I, I, I have no idea. That's really funny. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. It's like that's that's it. Where's there need yeah. to be more? You know. <laughs> that's <just the> <laughs> right. That's really funny. That's it. Maybe it's like Lady Gaga, five foot two. This is what you get, type of thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, I suppose. I'm all five foot two of me. This is what you get. <laughs> yeah. Seeing all of me. What yeah. if she was actually like five foot four? And it's like you get five foot two. That's it. It's like those extra two inches, though. You do not get. Yeah, they're <laughs> extra two inches. You don't get those. <laughs> yeah, you don't get those. Don't go. <laughs> <laughs> that's for me. That's, that's for, for you. me. That's private shit. Those two inches. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, um. Hmm. What else did I watch? I guess I don't really have too much to say about them, but I'll. I'll bunch them in. I watched two threes. I watched Halloween three, and I watched the ah. ex- the Exorcist three. Um, oh boy, both just just killer ones. They're just great. Um, I have not seen Halloween three. Oh, you gotta get on it, man! It is one of one of the best October movies for sure. It, is it? It's fantastic. Yeah, it's. Great. Oh. It gets a bum rep because it's Halloween three, you know. Right. It has nothing to do with anything, but it's awesome. It's great. There's definitely stuff in it that you know. There's some like weird stuff with the uh, the main character and like a love interest that's like a bit of a stretch. But the actual storyline and stuff is just like super. It's very very Halloween. You know, I love it. Which uh, is I'll great. Probably... I would probably really like it then. It's a lot of fun, yeah. and the score is just fucking killer. John Carpenter is did it? the score, yeah, and it's amazing. Oh, what? And he there's did like for the third one, yeah, and it's different, and it's not like playing the Halloween theme all the time, but that the like B theme in Halloween like comes in close to the end, and like he's like using a lot of the like the same notes and like chords and stuff like that that like evoke a similar feeling, but it's a new score, which is really interesting. Yeah. Amazing opening credits too. Just fucking amazing opening credits. And uh, dude, I'm jealous you've been watching all these sweet Halloween movies. I I gotta get on this. It's October. Yeah, dude, you gotta you gotta do it up. I do. That's awesome. Yeah. I, uh, have you heard it? Have you heard? Oh, sorry. No, Go you're ahead. fine. Uh, I was just gonna say, have you heard of the um, the new one that they're gonna make? Oh yeah. J- Jamie Lou Curtis is coming back. Yeah, totally. It's crazy. I'm it I'm crazy. mainly just pumped that uh, David Gordon Green's directing it. What? I didn't know that. Oh yeah, him him and Danny McBride. 
are Danny McBride's writing it with him and David Gordon Green's I heard, directing. I thought he, yeah, I heard like he was like producing it or something. I heard, yeah, I heard his name was attached. But David Gordon Green, that's amazing. Yeah, it's gonna be cool, man. It's gonna, it's be, gonna so be so weird. <laughs> it's gonna be awesome. And also, John, I don't know if it's confirmed yet, but John Carpenter has come out and he's like, I love to do the score. <laughs> it's like, it's oh incredible. my god, it's gonna be so good. And he's so good at like music now. Oh yeah, totally. It's just because he's craving it, you know. It's like it, all the he's scores are it. all the scores are incredible, but like it'll be nice to have this, like you know, to get a new because he's been doing like records. It'd be it'll be he's cool been doing to, records. He hasn't he's really done the, any like the lost themes. Yeah, and I love the lost themes records, but I'd like to hear some more like ambient stuff, and like stuff that you know sets a little lower and isn't like as intense. Because that stuff in the old scores is great, you know. Oh yeah. I love that like he's super just like, atmospheric and like, yeah. So that's exciting. I love that he's just like old. He's like seventy, but he's still yeah. like, he's rocking out more than ever. You know? <laughs> yeah. Do you hear? Did I tell you about? Uh, I heard somewhere about why he went on tour. Did you hear about this? I don't know if I talked about it on the cast before. I'm not sure. But like, I guess him and his son like love playing Xbox, and you know Amazing. his son, his son like plays with him in the band. And they were just, right. like, playing Xbox, and his son was like, you know, like, we could go on tour and just, like, play Xbox all the time on the road. And he's like, yeah, let's do it. He's <laughs> like, it's amazing. It's all about playing Xbox. Chuck Carpenter. Best dad ever. <laughs> yeah, it's so good. Chuck <laughs> Carpenter, dad. He's in dad mode. It's amazing. Just wants to play the Xbox. <laughs> yeah, with his son. And fucking rock out. When I saw him live, it was so good. He just came out. And it was like yeah. I think he started with the Escape from New York theme, and he was just holding nice. up like the rock symbols, going like yeah, and then, like bam, 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 bam. It's like let's rock. It was amazing. <laughs> so good. <laughs> yeah, it's <was> amazing. <laughs> I'm so jealous you got to see him. Dude, he's That's going on awesome. tour again. Is he coming? Is he coming near you? I gotta check. He didn't come for his last tour, but he's... I hope he does this time. Pull it up. Check it out, bud. I'll check it out right now, then. He's got a new album coming out too. Did you hear about that? No, I didn't. It's, it's like n- new like band versions of um the scores. So it's like the main themes from all the movies he's or I don't know about all, but the vast majority of the movies he scored like done in his newer like full band oh, style. So he's like redoing them. That's yeah, interesting. It's basically like a cover album, like a best of cover album, which is kind of weird, but it'll be cool. No, he's not. He's not coming to Florida. Bummer. Not coming to Florida. Sorry. That's all right. Whew. He's got to come at least somewhere to Florida. Come on, yo. I know, dude. It's like you can play Xbox in Florida, John. Come on. <laughs> uh, oh, well. Maybe one day. What are you going to do? But. Write him a letter and demand that he comes. <laughs> yeah, seriously. That's what you have gonna... an audience down here, That's John. What Come do. on. Um, but yeah. Anyways, anyways, um, the last one on my list is uh, we haven't really talked about it, and it, ha- it ended a while ago. Well, actually, a couple weeks ago. But uh, Rick and Morty. Oh, nice. Do you watch? Do you watch Rick and Morty? I do, but I still haven't seen the last one or two. What was the? the what two. was the the second to last one? I don't remember. Was it the one with um, Beth and the weird guy who had sex with all the creatures and the yeah. made up land? <laughs> yes. Okay, I saw that yeah. one. That one was amazing. But uh, that one's amazing and super dark. <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> that character I thought was super funny. <laughs> it's just like, yeah. He was just like this little kid who got left in this yeah. la la land. All right, now we're all gonna have sex with each other. <laughs> it's just like all these like, like weird had- fucked up creatures. It's like incest and also cannibalism. <laughs> yeah, just, just like the most vile, disgusting thing. It's really, it was really good. I thought that episode was really funny. Yeah, overall the the show is really good, and overall this last season was awesome. Um, it was, I, I like how it was about kind of humanizing Rick a little bit. Mm-hmm. That's that was kind of the theme and making him. Be like, hey, like he actually cares and stuff. Yeah, um, I thought that was kind of cool, and um, I just love the culture around Rick and Morty. It's just it's so interesting. They like the whole thing with the Szechuan sauce. Yeah, like, I was about to bring the, it up a couple days ago. Yeah. Do you hear about all the crazy shit though? 
I heard about some. Yeah, just people tell, like tell yelling, me. we want sauce, and like the cops <laughs> having to come. It's the fucking stupidest thing I've ever heard. It's insane. <laughs> just like picturing, people. picturing the people who don't know, like the people who like work at McDonald's or like the cops. <laughs> And it's just like, what, what is happening? Why, why are all these people here? It's like, they all want the Szechuan sauce. It's like, <laughs> what the hell is going on? The cops come because it's unruly. The cops like, okay, so you're telling me that everyone is in line here to get a special Mulan Szechuan sauce because they saw it in a cartoon? Like, what the hell yes. is going on? Like Reality. That yeah. really happened. <laughs> it's insane. <laughs> like made Szechuan sauce <laughs> popular. <laughs> yeah, it's like what the fuck are they talking about? <laughs> did you, you did you go to get the sauce? No, uh, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't either. I, I, I know some people. It. I know. Yeah, I did too. But I know some people who did, and they like didn't get any, like because it ran out. Like they didn't yeah. provide enough. Like they provided like twenty packets in certain oh, that's cities. It? Jesus, it was like. Re- I was about to say, like, 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 what, are people coming at, like, 8 a.m. to get the Szechuan sauce? Like, what the hell? It was, like, I know it was some obscure, like, really low number. Like, definitely not enough for the amount of yeah. people that wanted it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so. Uh, funny stuff, man. That's insane. It's really funny. Rick and Morty, man. Did you like the finale, though? Was it a good finale? Yeah, I liked it. I liked it. It wasn't like anything crazy. Was it, but as it had good as like a, the finale of last season? I think the last season finale was better. I thought that the finale was so good. The last that one was year. so good. Yeah. This one was kind of like Well, you'll you'll see. You'll mm-hmm. see. But it wasn't like as good, I don't think. Okay. It had a little wrap up, okay. but it was kind of like, "Oh, okay, it's over." Mhm. You know, I wish there was more. <laughs> I feel like they didn't uh it felt like the trajectory they set was that it was going to carry over more, which I was intrigued mm. to see this season. Yeah. And while I think the episodes have all been funny, that seems a little absent, and I, I would have liked that. You know what I mean? Because, like, the carryover from the finale and then, like, the first episode was, oh. like, a direct, like, you know what I mean? Right. And I know they did right. that before loosely with, like, the party and freezing time or whatever, but, like... yeah. And then, I mean, there is the undercurrent of, like, Jerry's, like, in the, living in the motel or whatever, and, like, I thought the episode where he goes out with Jerry was one of the best ones. Like, when they go on, like, a pity adventure or whatever. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was great. But, like, I would have liked to see more, I guess, more of that, like, aspect this season. Well, those storylines kind of wrap up. They wrap up. Okay. To a certain extent. Um, And you're left with, like, one fundamental question, which is whether or not... I forget her name, um, but the mom. What's mm-hmm. her name? Beth. She's, yeah, Beth. Whether or not Beth is a clone. What? Yeah, that's like the big thing on the internet um, because they leave it up. There's a whole episode about it where she thinks she's a clone, and then this is the finale. It might be the finale or the one before, huh. and so you're kind of left with you're not quite sure. It's not explicitly said whether or not she's a clone or not interesting well i'll yeah, see so I'll... it's kind of like this debacle uh-huh i personally don't think she's a clone i got you because of the way it plays out and the way that uh rick kind of treats her mm-hmm. but yeah that's kind of the talk of the show is whether or not she's a clone or not interesting yeah because there's so many alter- alternate timelines yeah, and like... he's like changed things so many times like yeah, they're I not guess. even the same people that they were starting out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's, which is it's so crazy. So Such a crazy. good show. I I really <laughs> loved the um, the episode of the like tales from the like Rick and Morty Citadel or whatever, where it was all Ricks and Mortys and they're like just the same old story. Morty's killing yep. Mortys. <laughs> you know, Mortys like... killing Mortys. <laughs> yeah. Just Ricks killing Ricks. Same old story. Like all that stuff was super funny. It's so um, funny. It was a lot one of, of my fun. favorite one of my favorite episodes was like the really dark one of how they extracted the uh like the like the chemicals in the, his brain. Oh of yeah. His, his best memory with his daughter or whatever uh-huh. just to like put it on wafers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was incredible. Sim- like simple yeah. Ricks or whatever. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, and that's why we use the juice that he excretes whenever he thinks yeah. about it. <laughs> in every simple Rick's bar. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, it's so good. And it's like his deepest, most emotional moment that's just <laughs> completely duplicated for mass production. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing. It's so good. It's really, really funny. <laughs> it's hysterical. Yeah, I love that one. That one was like really fucked up. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> this is insane. It was good though. Um But yeah. So I think that wraps it up for our watch lists. Yeah. Got any one more, maybe? Um It's up to you. I watched uh The Room with my oh, roommate. Okay. We could talk about this because I watched it recently as well. Yeah, yeah. Um and he it's had, a good lead into what's coming up. He hadn't seen it, my roommate TJ, so he uh he got it and we watched it. Man, that thing is just a big piece of shit. <laughs> oh my god. It's like it's nothing new, but uh yeah. Yeah, I hadn't seen so it in a long time and it was just like, man, this thing is outrageous. Um I bought the DVD because my fiance Emily hadn't seen it mm-hmm. and I want her to watch the movie coming out with James Franco. Yeah, yeah. You know, cuz I think she would like it, but it's like you got to see The Room to oh, understand yeah, yeah. this, gotta, right? Totally. And so I want her to see it and I and I want to go see it. So um I bought The Room too. And we watched it, and it was like painful for both of us to get through. Oh yeah, it's absolutely especially her. Brutal. And I was like, just stick with it. I know this is so terrible. This is brutal, but you'll understand the jokes. Mm-hmm. And she finally does, which is great. It's so interesting to see it introduced to someone who hasn't experienced it. Yeah, totally. Be- and then seeing it again after so many years, it's like it is a god awful movie. <laughs> Honestly, it's like I forget how bad it is. I forget I, I that do too. D- it's, it's just like really this bad. Like, weird assumption and dynamic of all these characters that just like it's almost like a like a weird sitcom of like everyone just like coming in the house and sitting down. And it's yeah, just like her mom like so is there strange. all the time and like why does this kid it's like he has a special bond Who's with the Denny kid? and it's just like okay what's the backstory with Denny and why does he just walk in and then they're like hey we're trying to have private time and he's just like can I hang out with you guys it's like get the fuck out of here Denny I'm trying to smash who bud. is this like, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like come on man I'm trying to dip my wig bro like get out of here yeah. <laughs> And then, of course, there's just Tommy Wiseau being Tommy Wiseau. Like, yeah, just he's just a fucking weirdo. Insane weirdo, yeah. I'm, I'm very excited. <laughs> very excited for the Disaster Artist. I thought that trailer I am looked too. great. Um, I, I, I think it's going to be I think it's gonna be pretty enjoyable. And from what I've read, I, I, I'm just really excited about, like, I don't know. I just hope uh, it doesn't slip into, like, the... Where it's just like, because that first trailer, I felt like, even though it was like funny, it's like if the whole movie yeah. is just like making jokes about the room, then like, what's the? I'll just watch the room. Right, right. No, the new trailer was like, yeah, but that, that was good. That new one was very, very tasty. Yeah. So it's like now I get a sense of what the movie's gonna be. Yeah, totally. And I think his performance looks really good. I mean, of course, it's just it a couple of lines, but like, he I looks think he's just like him. him. He's doing him pretty well. Like when he laughs, he's like, ha ha ha. <laughs> it's amazing yeah. he got it it's down it's spot on dude i love it yeah i think it's gonna be really good yeah I'm, um, I'm very excited it's gonna be interesting to see like i don't think again like i don't think a lot of people know what the room is or have seen it so that's the hard part at, from a marketing standpoint like how do you make this film right for like mm. i think it's going wide release to an odd, to uh, you know, how are you gonna make money if like most people don't even know what movie you're referencing? Yeah, totally. So I think it's just gonna, it's about making it its own story mm-hmm. as well. But also like, how do you get Tommy Wiseau the character to feel like an actual person? <laughs> like, yeah, you know what I mean? Because yeah. like he's so bizarre and his mannerisms so are so bizarre. strange that like. Like, it seems like in a movie where James Franco's playing him, if you didn't know that he actually acts like that, it'd be like, what the fuck is he doing? <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, what like, is going on? What is this character? It's like, no, it's just a real guy. It's just real strange. <laughs> he had a lot of money, wanted to make a movie. Yeah. 
Which is weird. Isn't that the whole thing? It's like no one really knows like where he got the money if he was just like rich or. I I've read up on him and supposedly he was just he's always just been wealthy. Gotcha. And he just like wanted to make a movie. <laughs> so just happened to be outrageous. literally the worst movie ever made. So stupid. Wasn't it like hey, simultaneously but... shot film and digital just for no reason? I heard that. I somewhere. don't know. I feel really? like I remember seeing, like, a camera rig or something. Maybe not the whole thing, but, like, just fucking stupid. <laughs> you know? Oh, my like, God. The part in the trailer where it's, like, I didn't even know that happened, but, like, the part where it's, like, the the alleyway. And it's, like, <laughs> yeah, it look like the alleyway right out there. Why don't we just shoot the alleyway? It's a real Hollywood movie. <laughs> yeah. It's <laughs> a real Hollywood movie. Yeah. <laughs> really funny one more thought about the room um re-watching it my favorite scene has to be when he goes to the flower shop oh yeah because that amazing. scene is amazing and so bizarre because that's why it's amazing is because it's so bizarre how it's shot and how it's how it's like edited together and then like the sound bites underneath it are like what dialogue are you like who acts this way? This is so strange. Yeah, totally. Wow. I'm so I just sent you this photo of him shooting it simultaneously. And then in the message, I see uh, above it, I sent it to you the last time. Or in July. Oh, you did send this to me. <laughs> it's really funny. <laughs> so I guess he actually did. Wow, shows how good my memory is. He shot him simultaneously. Just just wow. the dumbest shit I've ever heard. <laughs> You're just blowing money out the door. It's like, oh yeah, I'm going to shoot 35mm and then uh, 720p digital. And <laughs> we'll we'll see what comes out better. <laughs> we'll just we'll just take what? a... We'll just see later in post what works. It's like, I don't know, I'm pretty sure the 720p isn't going to hold up against a fucking 35 camera. <laughs> Insane. <laughs> And if you're shooting the 35, like, you're using the film. Like, use the film. Yeah. <laughs> just, you're paying for the film. Just don't understand. Maybe he oh. was uh, had aspirations like James Cameron, and he was filming reference video as a backup in case he wanted to go back and CG over everything. And... Oh, my God. Oh. <sighs> Anyways, let's move on. We're going to go to our non-spoiler section of Blade Runner 2049 starting right now. Every civilization was built off the back of a disposable workforce. But I can only make so many. Shh. Happy birthday. There is an order to things. That's what we do here. We keep order. The world is built on a wall that separates kind. Tell either side there's no wall. You bought a war. You're a cop. I had your job once. I was good at it. I know. Let's get running, bud. We've been jogging. Let's get, Let's get running, you know? <laughs> running with blades. <laughs> running with blades in your hands. <laughs> yeah. Ah! That's a great idea. <laughs> All right, so Blade Runner 2049, this is a film with, wow, what a crew, right? Director Denis Villeneuve, writers Hampton Fancher, uh, Michael Green, one of which uh, wrote the original um, starring Ryan Gosling, Harrison Ford, Anna de Armas, Jared Leto, cinematography by... Roger Deakins. Rachi D. 
and oh raj music by hans zimmer and someone else and i want to give him credit because it's co-composed michael buble uh, right didn't he co-compose yeah, michael buble <laughs> that's it uh no benjamin wall wallfished benjamin wallfished and hans zimmer did the music and um, a brief description from IMDb, a Blade Runner, uh, excuse me, a young Blade Runner's discovery of a long buried secret leads him to track down former Blade Runner Rick Deckard, who has been missing for 30 years. This film has not been doing that great at the box office. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's probably because I'm not a lot of people have seen the original uh, which is crazy because it's so well renowned to be this classic science fiction film. Uh, you know, it's one. It's known as one of the best science fiction films ever made, right? Mm-hmm. And I guess a lot of people, a lot of people I've I know at work and things like that, a lot haven't seen it and they haven't gone to see this new one because of that. So I think that is hurting it. Then again, I don't think you have to see the first one. For this one to be work to work, but I think it definitely enhances the experience if you oh, know yeah. what you're getting into. You know, totally. I suggest you do see it before you see this one. Um, I saw this film a couple days ago um, on IMAX. I saw it on IMAX as well Thursday night. That's that's what I thought. And let's go ahead and get right into it. Yeah. Non spoilers, Zach. What what do you think? Um, I really loved half the movie, I would say. Um, it started, and I was just fucking loving it. I was like, this is great, like, big fan, looks good, sounds good, performances are good, like, Ryan Gosling didn't bug me, Jared Leto didn't bug me, <clears throat> the sets were fucking amazing. Sets are, Yeah. And also, I think the thing I appreciated most is it just it just kept with the, the pacing and the tone of the original and just kind of just slowed it down. It's like not very often that big blockbuster yeah. movies that open in every theater, like, have a really slow pace and are able to, like, really take their time, you know? And that aspect yeah. I really liked about it. Um, But I don't know if it was because I went to the bathroom about... An hour and a half, two hours, somewhere around there. Oh, man. And uh, not for very long, but when I came back, I felt like I had missed something. And I just, the rest of the movie, I just didn't uh, didn't enjoy as hmm. much. I felt like it kind of, it changed its vibes and it just kind of, I don't know, it just, it just didn't feel, it felt off the second half, hmm. I would say. But... I only say I went to the bathroom because I got. I was thinking like, if I did, I miss something. Like, right. Um, it was basically right when he. I don't, it's not a spoiler that he goes to meet Harrison Ford, but like basically no, it's like in the trailer. Yeah, yeah, right when he leaves to do that, I missed. He was like, I gotta go away somewhere, and then I came back, and he was like walking up. You know what I mean? So, which, well, I don't. I don't know if this is a spoiler either, but I think that happens a lot later in the film than I thought would happen. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Especially because I heard going in. It's near the end. Yeah. It's like 40, because it's like two hours, 45 minutes, right? It's like, I think it's technically two hours, 44 minutes. Okay. Um, But yeah, it's probably like around the like hour 45, two hour mark, I would say. Hmm. Yeah. Right? I'd say two thirds through the movie. Yeah. Two and I guess it, it I wasn't expecting it and then I heard that someone said that like Harrison Ford's like the main character of the movie and I was like oh that's fucking amazing he's in it way more than I thought it was gonna be and then it's like oh no this is like just about exactly how much I thought he was gonna be in it just oh like, he's he's very much a minor character yeah he's and a minor character I did think he was really good in it you know I'm not trying to poo poo yeah. it like no it looks fucking well, amazing well, and like I had a good time with it but like yeah it had we'll me in a lot. Performance me. more. Had me in a lot. Gotcha. Me. What about you? Um, I don't think it lost me quite as dramatically as it did to you. Um, it, it kind of just. I don't think there was like any certain point in the film where it like felt that way for me. But I will say that 
Um, I, I really like this movie. I uh-huh. really, really dig this movie. Um, but that isn't to say I, I don't think it's a masterpiece. I think a lot of people are calling it a masterpiece. I don't think it's a masterpiece. No. But I think it is fantastic. And I think that it's a it's a great achievement for what it is. And why it's a great achievement is all other things aside, all stigmas of, of Blade Runner and if you just look at this purely as like a cine- it's a standalone piece of cinema, I think it's f- f- crazy well done. Uh, it looks incredible. Uh, the performances are pretty good. Like the music is great. Like the the feeling and the tone, like you said, completely matches the original Blade Runner, mm-hmm. which I re- that's one of my favorite parts. Like it completely feels. Like, it, it lives in that same world. Like, we didn't leave it at all. Like, we yeah. are still living in the same world with these real sets, and it's amazing. Um, that is all fantastic. Uh, I think the majority of the performances are pretty well done. Like, Ryan Gosling, he does his thing. I don't think it's anything extraordinary, but he's no. fine. It, it um, like, works in the movie, though. It works. To a point he's where, He's very like, robotic in general anyway. Yeah, so, so it's like they, they fit him in well. Because yeah, I feel yeah. like in other movies now it's just like okay I get it you're like autopilot Ryan Gosling right now right but autopilot no, Ryan Gosling his... just wedges in nicely to being a robot you know what I, I mean? agree like... no it, it's good casting I just I don't think it's anything extraordinary no it's, it is what it is I totally agree yeah um, but I I do think Ford's performance is one of his best like I thought he was really good he was fantastic yeah like he did a great job and he totally makes up for i think his performance in the original blade runner is poor i think that's one Mm. of its flaws and if you watch it now like some of the scenes of like when he's getting slapped around in blade in the original blade runner and just Mm. like like he has these like weird i don't know if it was the directing but his performance is just like kind of bad in that movie and he's good in he's good in everything so it's weird to see that i haven't seen it in a um, long time i wanted to rewatch it before i saw this but i didn't get the chance oh you should totally rewatch it now yeah um but yeah i don't think his performance is that good in the original but he definitely makes up for it in this i think he's great and really very subtle like emotions he's bringing to the to the role as well um, I thought also Anna de Armas was really really good and like the girl replicant the mm. basically the henchwoman of Jared Leto yeah. she was f- phenomenal as well um, Jared Leto not m- my favorite I think, tolerable honestly tolerable but I don't think it's his performance I dislike I don't like his dialogue I don't understand mm. maybe I'm starting to get off topic but I I'm starting to like for Jared Leto, for him, that's one of my biggest flaws. Was like all his all of his dialogue was just very thematic. It was very just like yeah, telling us what the movie was about while we're experiencing it. It's like totally. I just I don't even know anything about you. Like I, I don't <laughs> yeah, know. you're just some like <laughs> blind guy in a castle basically. Um, yeah, I just I definitely have yeah. some stuff to say on him once we get into spoilers for sure. Yeah, we'll talk but more. I don't want to spill it now, you know. Um, but to wrap up my general thoughts, I just, yeah, I really did enjoy it, but I did think, like you said, there is probably around that mark, halfway to two-thirds through, it kind of lost you, and I can see that. It was obviously a smoother transition for me, mm-hmm. but I think looking back on it, and I'm like, yeah, it kind of started to like lose its groove a little bit near the end, and um, it didn't quite feel... Yeah, started to feel a little messy near the end, but I still yeah. l- loved it all the way through, and I I like the ending. I I'm happy with where it ended, um, and I just really freaking like that they didn't turn it into like some stupid blockbuster action movie. Honestly, like, though, there, a, there was a lot more action than I thought there was going to be. I mean, there's really not that much in terms of, especially how it's marketed. You think it's going to yeah. be? I don't know. It's I, just. Uh... It was a lot slower, a lot. Oh, definitely. More of a mystery thriller than. Then it's not an action movie. Than things now, but I, yeah. I do. Then I think it now. was mainly. I liked the fight scene between 
uh, Ryan Gosling and Harrison Ford. That was cool. With that, like, weird hologram thing. Yeah. I was into that. Well, I liked that. Um, but, I don't want to spoil anything there either, but... Oh, um, sorry. I should have no, waited that, on that. But. I think that's already online that they fight, yeah. but um, we won't talk details yet. Yeah. Um, I would I would say the last action set piece is what like I wasn't crazy about. But I can see that, but in the I think I kind of like it. Mm. Mm-hmm. I think I like it. Um again, that's that's getting past where we want to be. Um But what'd you think of the score? I I I enjoyed the score, but I I feel like at some points it became too monotonous. I think I loved half of it, like much like the uh, the whole movie, but more yeah. interspersed. I loved the the big moments. I guess the big moments of more ambient stuff. I was really into, but yeah, just get the, there's a lot of ambience. Get the fucking buzzing waz. Just like get it, that shit out of the movie. Like I did not care for any of that. Like the the trailer sounds. Very Hans Zimmer. So Hans Zimmer, and it's just like, oh, it's just like, felt like he couldn't fucking help himself sometimes. Because, like, there's certain moments that are so great, and they have these amazing synth tones, and it's just nice, like, big chord switches, and it feels really, yeah. really big with that, with just having, like, pr- uh, layers of ambient keys. You know what I mean? And that's awesome. But then yeah. they pull Mo- out the... And it's just like, oh, that it just did not feel like it belonged in the movie to me. My my least favorite part of the score was the kind of like the the deep voices that yeah. It kind of reminded me of like Revenge of the Sith, mm-hmm. <laughs> like that score. Yeah, yeah like kind I wasn't of like that deep. I was like, what is this? That uh, I didn't personally, like that part. it was less offensive to the, than the Waz for me, but I I also like could have totally done without them. Like I was like, this is kind of weird. Like it didn't fit. I don't know. It didn't yeah, fit. it just uh, I wasn't crazy about that. But it wasn't a negative, um, for me. But it's just yeah, the fact that it's I so close too. It's just like I feel like the whole movie is like this for me too. It's just like so close to being really 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 great that the fact that it's like just not that makes it more frustrating for me you know what i mean like i almost sort of rather it been worse <laughs> so that it's just like you know not a thing but uh oh i I'm, I'm not quite that down on it like you i think it's i think it's still pretty remarkable uh i i mean yeah. i i loved it honestly i loved it but i don't think that it's like I said, a masterpiece, and I don't think it's flawless. You know, it definitely has some flaws, and I think it, uh, that some of that lies in the script. But um, I think Denny Villeneuve's job, his particular job, and Roger Deakins' oh, yeah. particular job was just A+. plus. They nailed the tone. They nailed the feeling. You feel like you're in that world of, of Blade Runner. It's alternate time lo- time zone reality yeah. because i love how they just like kept the yeah. same companies in there like they're not yeah, companies totally. that exist like, anymore yeah atari's like, still atari. huge <laughs> it, yeah yeah and like pan am like huge on um but yeah it's just i love this alternate timeline totally. world that they're living in which is just really cool to like kind of they put you in a headspace where i actually it took me a couple hours after I left the movie to be out of that headspace. I felt like I was still, mm. I felt strange, and I felt like I was still in that dystopian yeah. world. Atmospherically, for a bit. it's it's fantastic. It definitely nails it. It's and it's the amazing world building and the um the production design is fucking incredible. Like I love hands down amazing production yeah. design. Like we were just talking design. about the like Atari sign yep. and just the fact that like. The shot of it, there's like a, a nether giant building, like not very far away. The point where it's almost like they didn't yeah. plan any of this out, and everything is just like rapidly expanding. Right, you really had that feeling, like that first shot yeah. where he's in the car, like flying into the city, and you see, it and it's like kind of slum yeah. looking, and it looks like it's all these like makeshift places on hills, yeah. and then you realize the hills are actually just like 
giant skyscrapers and you can see like the cracks of neon in the streets in between that was like it was really yeah, effective that was cool and just like making it just like holy shit like this is it's like so overpopulated we've like yeah we've fucked like this the earth, giant yeah. solar farm and the giant like trash city and like all that stuff was awesome yeah very cool world building and again bringing it back to the look um and talking a little more deeply about Roger Deakins, give him a fucking Oscar now because yeah. it looks so good. Just like that mustard yellow mm-hmm. when they go to Vegas and just the colors and the lighting is just incredible. Just fucking killer. And what makes it so good too is that the fact that they're like on for most of the most of the movie is real sets. Uh-huh. And that's just amazing. Totally. So I got to give it props for that. For sure. Jared also Jared um, Leto's um loved his like lair with the weird like light movement of like and all yeah. basically just all the lighting in that like giant building was amazing and like his room where the whole Wallace Corporation was awesome. Yeah, and they're like shooting like the reflecting off the water and the water's making all these patterns over the walls and the yeah. shafts of light are moving and it's just like damn like that is... that's kind of like that that's kind of like that water thing is in the original yeah too. yeah you have that in um in that main building too um of uh i'm sorry um what's the wallace took over what corporation i don't remember oh we're gonna get hate for this <laughs> tyrell tyrell tyrell, yeah, tyrell. Yeah, yeah, there you go so the original tyrell building had that too of like the that same look with the orange light and mm-hmm. um, with the water reflecting on their Did faces. it move? It didn't move like shafts like that, though, right? Like almost like it's no, rotating? No, the shaft. The, yeah. The shafts is new. It the is really is cool. That was cool. But the water effect was. Yeah, something. yeah. Yeah. So they kept both of that and they improved upon it. Mm-hmm. And it just looks like it's so futuristic that, like, that. Well, how could that place ever exist? You know? Totally. Like, as an office. But (laughs) I love how it's just... It gives you the feeling, too, like, everything is so advanced, yet it's, like, there's not enough people living in those spaces sometimes. Like, almost we've expanded too much. And, yeah, it is still overcrowded, but there's still just, like, this giant building that's, like, with barely anyone in it. Yeah, exactly. Like, Like, these giant pyramid buildings that, like, or for these corporate offices, but no one is there. Mm-hmm. It's just, it's so weird, but so, so effective. Yeah, it was great. And all the techs, too, like all the things that, like the devices they would use and stuff, struck a really nice balance in the in the design, where it's like yeah. something, my pet peeve a lot of the times, especially on like reboots of things or new additions, the, just like the tech matching like drives me yeah. nuts like in prometheus me how too. like they have like <laughs> yeah. holograms that are like touch sensitive and they move them around and zoom in it's like f- full rooms changing in like photo real yeah. holograms and it's like oh yes yeah, so that all exists when alien takes place like fuck off you know what i mean i know come on like <laughs> i think they did a really good job about that in this movie and like making um making that feel nice and like it's a good balance yeah and it's like the even the thing with like the hologram character and like the, like AI or whatever and how she's like attached yeah. to that arm on the ceiling and then yeah. like he gets the like thing you know and it's like oh that's it's interesting it's world building you know and it, it's really nice yeah it's great yeah it's great world building even just like details like uh Ryan Gosling I guess K his his kitchen his like his mm-hmm. kitchen and his sink his kitchen like counter backsplash area yeah I noticed looks exact it, there it's exactly like Harrison Ford is in the original. Oh yeah. It just like it just looks the same like it's so the production design is just incredible. It's amazing. Like, it's the same world that we've mm. known before. Like I love that. They really did their research and like it's it's a love letter to the original but also it has to pay homage to that but also set up its own story and be something new and take it somewhere else. Yeah. And it it does that, I think. Yeah. I agree. So, 
Let's go ahead. Do you want to move into spoilers? Let's go, let's go into spoiler town. I'm ready. All right, we're going to talk talk free range and spoilers right now. What do you want? I want to ask you some questions. The key to the future is finally unearthed. Bring it to me. They know you're here. I always told you, you're special. Your story isn't over yet. There's still a page left. So, we can talk in detail about the ending now. Mm-hmm. Um, I kind of like the... It was kind of like an old school Hollywood, just like water tank action scene. And I almost appreciated that the, the final climax scene was something like so small. Like this, like a small event of just this one kind of struggle mm-hmm. was like the big event. Because we always talk about like... Big versus small, right? Oh, totally. I loved how small and scale this movie it was. feels small. It's yeah. small scaled. There's no world ending. I mean, there's kind of this revolution that happens, which we'll talk about, but we don't see that. Yeah, it's really just about this event and these characters and like the end of their story. That one story, that one arc. Um, I appreciate it. Totally. Um. My thing is, I, I just felt like that fight scene, it it was trying to play the, like, fi- coming back and back, and it keeps going. You know what I mean? I just didn't feel yeah. like that was necessary. Kind of just like, oh, yeah, okay, was... I get it. She's really badass. He's back. Like, and... He's badass. <laughs> she's badass. I get it. You know what I mean? Yeah. But that being said, it's like, at the end of the day... You know, I'm complaining about this movie that's just, like, this crazy sci-fi movie that came out in all these theaters and is, like, way better than <laughs> anything else. The, you know what I mean? It's, <laughs> yeah, it's exactly. just almost the fact that it's, like, I, I don't know for me in general if it, like, justified being a sequel to Blade Runner. Like, could Denis Villeneuve have just made a, ne- a new sci-fi movie that's as good as the Blade Runner sequel that's just not called Blade Runner? You know what I mean? That, like, deals with similar concepts and stuff that just, like, isn't, like, beholden to the original. I guess that's... I guess so. That's my thing that I I felt like, in general, it just, like, didn't necessarily justify that. While I do think a lot of the stuff, world-building and, like, universe-wise, is really cool that they built off of, I guess mainly my big problem is that, like, I don't know if when I watched the original... It was just like, oh, yeah, Deckard just, like, totally wants to be a family man. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't know if I ever got that vibe. Fair enough. Um, I think they kind of tried to make that whole relationship better in this movie. Yeah. Ba- ma- basically making it okay. Because in the original, it's more of a... F- rewatch it, dude. It's more of a forced upon relationship than really just like more of a mutual thing it's Mm -hmm. there's their sex scene is like straight up rape it's a rape scene yeah and that would never fly today but back then it was the 80s times were different people thought differently i guess that was more romantic then (laughs) but you watch it now and it is like he forces her and you're like holy shit and when you think about it because when you first watch it you don't really see it but like Think of it from this perspective. Here's this guy who literally is forcing this robot to have sex with him. Yeah. That's crazy. But then they kind of explain in this new one that he was tries he tries to confuse him by saying maybe you were the, you know programmed to fall in love with her right yeah. away. You can help yourself. So that's interesting too. But then it gets into like back to Jared Leto. I don't understand. I just his character like who are you like what what are you doing like yeah. what's going on here like, 
like oh you have these cool like little things you put behind your ear like why like i don't know it just uh, he's he still he still bothered me a little bit yeah i i did think the things behind his ear was cool it's a cool piece of technology but, but it's it, just like i don't know anything about you other than you just speaking in broad philosophy and yeah it's just like why is like why is he in the movie who, who cares like what <laughs> okay you own the company but what are you what's so you're trying to create a slave force, a slave workforce to make, to like advance civilization, but like you're kind of brutal and I just don't understand him. I don't know. I, yeah, because it's like, he's like, I can never make enough. Like I need to make more, but also I'm going to kill this one that was just born and <laughs> slice his stomach yeah. open because I'm brutal. Yeah, and it's like, just like, I don't know. Like, and also I, I don't think he plays... He like doesn't play enough of a factor in the movie that like to to just like justify him for me. It's exactly. just like he's in it and he's just menacing and like talks about stuff and then he's just like, "Yep, that's it." Like it it cuts away and you're like, "I wonder what's going to happen with him next." And it's just like, "Oh, nothing." And never cuts back to him for the rest of the movie, fair enough, you know. Yeah, I don't I just I still think he was my least favorite part of the movie. For me, maybe I just had too much stigma about him. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think he was okay, but I, what would really have helped me enjoying him was his character and his script. Yeah, like, I don't, I don't think that don't was even, on. I don't think he was like given the best material to work with in the first place. That's what I'm saying. Like, I don't think it's all his fault. It was very just like philosophical dialogue. It's just like, what is this guy like? E- are you not even a person? Like. what? <laughs> yeah what's your story you know i don't know this made they just made him like more human i mm-hmm. think i would have liked them more yeah it, it like like we were saying earlier it's just he's like a little contradictory and yeah. i just i i don't understand his motives and then i also don't think he's like fully justified even like being in the movie that much it just seems like well we need a villain so let's have like a half villain Who's just like a villainous yeah. guy that's not like he's not like a villain to the story of the movie. He's just like a villainous guy that's in the movie. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just I guess he's evil because he wants to have slaves. Yeah, which is pretty fucked, but also Of course, but then the woman that works for him is like super intelligent. Mm-hmm. And very much like a, a human, but is like cold in her ways. Um, I don't know. I thought she did really well, though. I thought she yeah. was like one of the best she was parts good. of the movie. I liked Robin Wright a lot as well. I thought she was really good. Yeah, she was great. Although I thought Super. her asking for the the memory was like the most like, well, protagonist, why don't you tell me some exposition? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's a very funny setup of her. Like, tell yeah. me and I'm a your memory boss, you had. So like, I order you to tell me. It's like, all right, well, this isn't coming back later. <laughs> like, Yeah. I, I did think her performance was good, though. I liked her. I thought she was good. She was her classic icy, mm. iciness she had to her. Um, she's always great. I love Robin Wright. I just would have liked her to be in it more. Like, I, you know? Oh, she was in it more, but also... Why wasn't there like, how was how was the henchwoman? I keep forgetting her name. We gotta look this up. But she goes in and she kills Robin Wright in her own office. She kills a FBI like captain or lieutenant or whatever in her own office. Yeah, and just, just there's like, no gets repercussions out of, there? of that. <laughs> yeah, there's no repercussions from that. Like, what happens to Robin Wright? Yeah, she's who's Lieutenant dead. Joshi? Her name. How does she get out of there? And like, I don't know. I feel like there's yeah. there's a lot of weird things like that. I can't. I feel like I have more. I'm I'm a little more hazy on it now, but I feel like there were a lot of things like, well, wait, why is that? And then it's just like I don't know. I guess that's just how it is. Like, but in its defense too, I was even thinking this while I watched it. Like there are certain things where, like he just finds a guy who can uh, decode something. Yeah. Um, like give him a clue. He just finds a guy who can like look at this DNA and give him a clue. But that's how the original was. That's what the original did. And you don't have to 
Everything doesn't have to be explained. It's fine. Yeah, but also, like, how <clears throat> how did he... What's the deal? Is, like, sh- the daughter the only person that, like, makes these memories? Like, that seems a little convenient. It's like he's the first person that... He, she's the first person that he goes and talks to. And then it's like, okay, well, clearly she's part of... I, my, I guess my main thing is that all the threads in the movie are the only threads, if that makes sense. There's, like... There's the the connector start, and then there's the end. And it's like, those are the ones. And it's like, almost everything that comes up is, like, wrapped up in a dress later, which sounds... It's like, yeah. But also, yeah. In, a, in a mystery, it's just kind of like, well, how's this play in? Oh, clearly there's a direct line to that. There's no... Like, when Ryan Gosling... When the character... K? Is that his name? K, when K yeah. is like... Grip coming to grips with the fact that he might be the the you know child or whatever, and he thinks yeah. it's him. It's like no way is it him. I don't know about you, right. but personally, I was like, oh well, clearly he's wrong because there's no mystery movie where they find out the mystery thirty minutes, <laughs> forty minutes into the movie. You know what I mean? Like, well, I thought at first it was like. Before they even showed it, I was like, okay, I guess it's going to be him. And then they reveal it like, oh, that's him. Okay. Mm-hmm. I was like, yeah. But what else is there? And I did like the kind of the twists and turns of like the experience of the film where you're like, you're not sure. And that that's the whole point, right? You're not sure what's real, what's not. Um, is mm-hmm. he real? Is he not? What is real? Like, are his dreams real? Are his memories real? are like these animals that he confronts real you know like there's that's the constant question of this movie is what's real and like that's the big question we'll come across if we ever have androids which i think we will and artificial intelligence you know you come across these themes of you you blur those lines fake like reality and fakeness just completely Mm. merge and there's no difference at some point. Yeah. When it comes to like living and being intelligent because now we have these intelligent creatures that humans have created who are just becoming more superior and like that's and themes and everything. And I think that's probably the natural progression from Blade Runner to this one. Yeah. That's how you evolve it, right? Is like the replicants kind of almost replace the humans. Um, they're more human than human. Mm-hmm. Uh, but also, like, say, why do but... replicants have to breathe? I know that's a, that's. There's some like weird things too. Like, yeah, yeah. It's like, why do they have to breathe? And if they can't really bleed to death, right? I mean, yeah, they do in Blade Runner. Like, you get shot, you die. But I don't know. There, there's you don't, just you, you're. I guess they like they create they craft these replicants to be like human. Yeah. They have to have air. They have to have but like, blood. But, like, it's just weird because it's like, okay, they have to be able to breathe, but also, like, they can take getting their head, like, smashed through a wall and be fine. You know what I mean? Like, right. Th- and they have super strength. Yeah, and it's, and it's just, like, a weird line where it's, like, I get that they're supposed to be, like, human, but also, like, if you're just designing a thing to, like, essentially be a slave, then, like, why would it need to eat? Because then, yeah. Why are you because needing you... to prepare food for your robot slave? It's like it's a it's a slave, <laughs> it, and it's not like you're enslaving something. It's like you're literally creating this yeah. for the purpose of I don't know. It's just it's weird. Like the logic. It is strange. Like, it, the the logic, the logic and like the the rules behind uh, replicants is. I mean, that was blurred in the original too. Yeah, it's, it's like it's just like why would he have drinks? You know, like why yeah. why do you need why do you they what they get intoxicated too like that's strange you know totally and it's it's just i think mainly it's a thing for me in this one because it's like i feel like they go they go out of their way and it's not a bad thing to like think out the universe and like all these little details are like so thought out that like yeah but the concept of like a replicant not being able to just like be underwater isn't that's not a thing. I don't know. It's just, 
it's it makes it more apparent in this one i would say you know what i mean does that make sense yeah 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 um yeah it's 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 a little yeah like the lines are blurred on like if we had replicants i don't see i don't know it's strange it's not quite clear like they're humans they're more human than human yet they're replicants so they have extra strength and are super powerful um but also they can get shot and they can drink alcohol and they need food and air and can drown Mm -hmm. it's weird like if you're creating a slave race why craft them to be more human like why is jared leto like crafting these replicants to be more human yeah when if he wants them to slaves it makes more sense for him to make them less human right yeah to make them like just very efficient machines with no emotion yeah no like which like uh they talk about is happening with like the updates of them but also like it's not because they're keeping on they're holding on to these other things that make them more human. It kind of goes back to that inconsistency I think with his character that's just like yeah. I don't understand like why he's motivated to do these certain things. Yeah. So we're going to take this and this comes to our to the audience. We're going to have a live reaction to the Star Wars trailer. And so right now on Monday Night Football Star Wars The Last Jedi trailer is about to show and we're going to watch this and then come back with some a brief pause from this review and talk about the trailer and then get back to our review. So uh, hang in there, stay tight and uh, we'll be right back. When I found you I saw raw untamed power and beyond that something truly special something inside me has always been there I was awake. And I need help. I've seen this raw strength only once before. It didn't scare me enough then. It does now. Let the past die. So initial reaction, Zach, we just watched the trailer for The Last Jedi that just aired during Monday Night Football. It's now online. Tickets are going on sale. I'm trying to buy tickets right now. <laughs> talking about this. But um, let, let's talk about our reactions of, of Star Wars. What do you think? I thought it looked great. I'm very excited. Uh, looked good. It looked distinct, which I like. Look- it didn't necessarily... Uh, look like any of the other ones which it looked more like almost like a fantasy movie which i was really into 
Yeah, dude. I think this thing looks bananas, man. Like, I have so many questions. I have so many questions. Like, what does this mean? Does Ray join with Kylo Ren? Like, yeah, what's going know. on with Luke? What's going on? Like, she's got raw power. Like, what's going on here, man? It's crazy. Totally. It looks wild. And they're also like, uh, really juicing that red. They're just squeezing that red all over the place. Oh, yeah. It's the total theme color right there, man. Totally. It's all about um, that red. All about that red. And whew, I do like how it does seem like a completely, like, it's a Star Wars movie we've never seen before. Yeah. Totally. Which, good. We want that, right? Like, yeah, that's, that's what the we whole, want. Let's get that going, you know? Yeah, let's let's get that. So good for Ryan Johnson, and I feel like this is gonna be a risky move. But like, hey, this is what us fans want. We don't want more of the same. Force Awakens was a great kind of introduction and reimagining and bringing us back to this world and the characters, and bringing us new characters too that we we like. And I want to see more of them. And now this is the opportunity to bring this whole franchise in a whole new direction and i think we're gonna get that so i am excited i'm pretty pumped it looks awesome um that low angle shot of ray with the lightsaber with the sun in the background Ooh, get that hell tasty. out of here cut that right out of the movie that's a bunch <laughs> of bullshit it's too good stop it <laughs> i'm like looking it up right now i just want to see that shot again holy shit that shot's so good there's a few really good shots, like very tasty um, shots in here that we're not used to. Yeah, I'm liking it. The lighting looks kind of weird, like the shot of Mark Hamill, this weird reaction shot of him looks really strange, yeah. and like I like the weird mesh on Kylo Ren's face. Yeah, it's... I didn't expect that from his scar. I thought it was, I didn't, I didn't know we'd get that little mesh part there. This weird like ice fox thing and. I don't know, yeah, man. A porg, which is like the thing flying with um, Chewbacca. Yeah, that thing's creature. goofy looking. <laughs> I'm liking it. Man, I'm just... This thing's looking real tasty. This I'm crazy... Uh, first of all, this shot of her like walking up with all this mist, it just like looks like a fantasy movie. It's amazing. It does look like I mean, a fantasy like, movie. There's like interior with all these like trees and this like shaft of light. It almost looks like tree roots. It's like, oh, man. This thing's looking nice. Looking real nice. I'm liking it. Daddy likey. <laughs> Daddy like. They are going for... It's funny how, like... Definitely has a... There's, like, some ice stuff. And Is this a desert or is it snow? I think it's a desert, right? There's, like, a desert planet, yeah, that they... Yeah. I guess they fight the new AT-AT... At at Walker's, it's like a classic second movie. Uh... <laughs> yeah, it's well, it's definitely dark, right? It looks yeah. dark, man. And that's what Empire was. Totally. No, this looks great. I'm I'm totally in. I'm fucking in. Not like I was gonna watch it and be like, I'm out. I'm not seeing it. You know what I mean? Like, no way that's happening. But uh, yeah, it's looking real tasty. Yeah, really interesting. I, it's like I've like I said I have so many questions like I don't know what this means like I don't know if she's gonna be good or not yeah you know be crazy you still trying to get tickets still trying to get tickets <laughs> <laughs> um nothing's working I've, I've oh. tried I'm now trying a different theater I've given up on IMAX because there's only so many of those 2d IMAX ones uh -huh. are like I think they're like sold out now I tried to get tickets I had some decent ones. It's just not loading. I'm pretty sure they're gone now. So I'm trying a different theater. Maybe I'll gotcha. get lucky. But anyways. Um, well, that was important to do, I think. We love Star Wars. That This is a moment in history that we had to experience. We haven't been recording our podcast <laughs> during it. This is yeah. big. This is big, you know. So you just heard our live reactions to this. Uh, I can't wait. But enough about that. Let's move back into our um, our spoiler segment of, uh, of of Blade Runner 2049. What 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 else?
notes did you feel that like the second half was lacking? Like what what about well, the second half okay. made you kind of like feel like hey this falls apart for me? Here's a question I have is just what happens right before he goes to Las Vegas in the movie. He's in his apartment. He's like his AI girlfriend's like I totally want to like not be bound to here or whatever. It's like I want to go only on the the thing and he's like okay, fine. She goes off yeah. the grid and then then he's walking up to the hotel. What's what's going on there? Oh my god. So this is a big you missed a big moment. Yeah. I think. And this is actually one of my biggest peeves with it too. Did you see the sex scene? No. Sex scene. You miss you missed the sex scene. Guess so. Then. Um Well, it's it's almost like a partial sex scene. That you don't actually see it happen, but it's the setup. Um Okay, so what happens is you saw Robin Wright die, right? Yeah. Okay. So it goes from that where basically she's like, you're done, right? You're done, um, and I have you, you know, I'm giving you 24 hours to basically figure out what you're doing, but you're off duty. You're no longer a cop. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So he's like, I got to go somewhere. He's like, well, I'm going to go home then. She's like, I'm giving you, I'm allowing you to do that because I like you. Yeah, yeah. Leave your badge and your gun. Leave. Then she dies right after. Mm Mm-hmm. So he goes home, and... I don't think that this next scene that I'm going to describe emotionally fit that where where it was placed because he just went through all this shit like, oh my god, like I'm not sure if I'm a replicant. I th- now I may have been raised as a child. Uh, this is strange, and now I don't have a job. And then he goes back home and finds that his girlfriend has set up that prostitute woman he met before. Oh wait, wait, no, uh, no! I saw, I saw that. Mackenzie Davis. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. So I while I'm that. talking about it, let me continue. Yeah. Uh, just that. So he he goes through this like emotionally traumatizing experience of like losing his job, finding out, not sure who he is, and then he's, then his girlfriend's like, "Hey, I brought a sex partner over." It's like I don't know. For me, that felt like that wouldn't. No one would like want to be intimate after like that emotional roller coaster you know what i mean yeah so it didn't quite work there it should have been earlier but let's go ahead and talk about that scene while we're at it like i thought that was scene was cool like having the the vr girl going in and out and like yeah that was it looked amazing it was really cool totally i was i was all on board (laughs) for that it reminded me of like the movie her Mm-hmm. By Spike oh, Jones, totally. You know? Yeah, you know, similar concept about the AI getting the person. You know, totally to... have like a having a human kind of mm-hmm. villain for her. Um, so that was interesting, but I thought that was really well done. Like, it just looks great. It looks totally. great. Um. So then, I then from there, I'm pretty sure that he takes her and the next morning they leave they go like see i thought from there i thought that was earlier in the movie i'm pretty sure that happens right before they leave for vegas Hmm. i I felt like it was earlier for some reason i definitely need to rewatch this movie well because it's he definitely at least leaves and comes back because it's just them two there and it's after he, I think, I think maybe that happens after. Does he go back and no, then because, get fired? Because she dies in Vegas, remember? Yeah, no, I know that. I'm I'm saying when we were talking about Robin Wright telling him that he's like off and needs to go. I think that happens after the sex scene, doesn't it? No, it happens before because that's why I didn't like it. Because it was like. He just got fired, uh, got so why would he yeah. like want to have sex? Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. That's what I remember about. I'm just it, I'm just hazy on what I missed. Cause then okay, so then they're. 
she decides that she doesn't want to be tethered to the thing, and then they leave. And then there's a scene, I cut like the last shot of a scene with um, the guy from Captain Phillips. Yeah, yeah. What was that? Which I'm scene? glad he's still getting parts, man. <laughs> huh? I'm glad he's still getting parts. Yeah, totally. Like, th- but that was that part was like kind of the part where I was like, it doesn't matter how he met that guy. Like, that's how the original movie was. Like, he just met people who like examined snake scales and shit like that. No, for sure. I'm just asking what yeah. happened in that scene because yeah. that's the scene that I missed. Oh, that's the scene that you yeah. missed. Um, let's see. Well, he's basically saying, "What does he say? What is he examining?" I gotta get back to this thought process here. Um, I don't remember exactly what happened. I'm sorry, because that's what no, it's does. okay. I guess it was like one of the one of the things for me. What I was getting at before is just like I felt I I was kind of hazy on like why he went to Vegas and like how he initially like met up with Deckard like was like how calculated oh. was that and oh, like did I, he know I, he was there or did he know he was I, in the town and he just found him randomly like I, I remember didn't... now I remember now I remember now he finds out that the wood of uh-huh. the horse was from a specific place which was from Vegas okay. and you could tell that that wood that he he like he, yeah he's like he brought him the horse he's like can you examine this he's like oh it's real wood uh, it's real wood so you must be rich uh-huh. and he's like oh just just I just want to know what it's about tell me what it's about he examines it and he's like oh it has like a lot of radioactivity inside the horse of the of the wood uh huh um so he's like there's only one place where this could be from and that's the most toxic place on earth. You don't need me to tell you where that is. And then, and then we kind of understand, like, oh, okay. And then later there's a scene where um, the evil robot chick is, like, trying to find out where where, where she where she confronts Robin Wright. That's mm. when she dies, right yeah. after that scene. Because then she's like, oh, um, she looks up on the computer where he is, and he we see, oh, he's in Las Vegas. Yeah. But did so he? That's where that happens. But so he goes to Las Vegas. But does how does he like find him in like the hotel? We don't really know that. We don't really know. There's just Other certain. He, yeah, for he, me that was just kind of like, wait, why did he go specifically there? Like, how did he know to look there? Yeah, especially since it's such a big place. It just seems kind of weird. See it right? again. I'd have to see it again. That's yeah, kind of my I thing. Just... It's like, I think maybe if I watch it again, I'll like it more just because I'll be able to, like, clarify it for myself. I just, I kept felt, I kept feeling like I was missing things and then questioning it and then going, I don't know. I don't think that was a thing. I think it's just kind of, like, convenient, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Some of that stuff's hazy for me, too. Just because, Yeah. It's a it's a long movie, but also a lot happens. So it's and not everything is hand, you know, spoon fed to you. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's kind of weird. Like I guess he just like finds him, but I'm okay with that. Yeah. I just never thought about it until now. You know. Hmm. He just like goes to a casino. And maybe there's some little subtle thing that I missed that made him know that Deckard was there. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Like, in this specific... But he also seems to, like, wander through, like, this wasteland for a bit, right? Like, he's slowly going Oh, yeah. This. There were some nice shots of him, like, approaching. But I guess... Yeah, I... It looked great. Oh, but... it looked amazing. I guess I just didn't know it's, like, was that, like, intended to be, like, a sequence of, like, time passage of him, like, searching? Or is that, like, That's literally him just, like, walking? You know what I mean? Because I feel like it could be both. I did see actually today. Um, there was a little interview with the director Denny Villeneuve, mm-hmm. who was doing a a video for um, New York Times, and it was like a breakdown of a scene type of thing. Yeah, and it was that scene like him approaching the oh, casino, nice. mm-hmm. and he was basically describing him walking through that. Like the reason he he like they did several takes where he's just like walk slower, walk slower. 
and he just loved the set of him walking slowly through this because he wanted it to feel like he's not sure if this is a dream. It's like again about the reality yeah. versus um, you know imagine imagination mm-hmm. and dreams, which is like this was a very dreamlike sequence, like to give that sense of what's real and what's not. And that's why I guess there's like an artful choice of why he had him walk slowly up to it, and yeah. it looked cool. But, oh, uh, totally. Yeah, I'm not sure how long it took him to get there, or like what made him eventually find the specific casino. Mm. Just a just a little convenient, but then yeah. again, may, maybe there's like a clue that I missed because I was like you know walking in front of people and like settling in from peeing (laughs) yeah yeah i was just like okay they're having an intense conversation i can pee in the amount of time of this conversation then i came back i was like damn it missed a bunch of shit what are you gonna do what are you gonna do i'm surprised you went man i held mine in i was like no way i had to go (laughs) honestly you had to go someone, someone in front of me pulled out their phone and i saw that there was like you know it had only been like an hour and a half or like an hour and 40 (laughs) minutes or something it was like fuck it was like a seven o'clock show and it was like 8 40 or 8 50 and i was like i gotta go (laughs) like i'm not (laughs) because it's like i never want to go but at a certain point if i'm holding it it just like it's it's actively ruining the movie because then i'm just thinking about how much i have to pee and how much i'm holding it you know I've been there, where it's yeah. like, literally half of this movie, I've just been thinking about how f- I have to pee so bad. Yeah, and it's <laughs> like, I could just miss one minute and then enjoy the rest of it, or I can, like, scale down the enjoyment level equally over the whole thing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, seriously. So. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know what else I have to, to say about Blade Runner. Um, yeah, maybe we should kind of wrap it up here where, you know... Let's just say again, like I, I really enjoyed this movie. I do think that I will benefit quite a bit from a rewatch. Oh yeah. Um, I think that's really gonna help both of us. But I did really like this movie, and I, I might like it even more a second time with more clarification. But there is a couple things that, like I said, bothered me. But overall, it's like visually dazzling. Um, the set and production and costume designs amazing um harrison ford it's like one of his best performances the atmosphere is incredible um and denny villeneuve man you can't can't go wrong he's such a good director yeah he's great so yeah i really liked it uh or i really liked half of it i just feel like the second the second half didn't uh they bring in all this stuff about like the uprising of like the you know and this whole other group and i felt like like that whole angle of it and the importance of the child and like deckard meeting her it just didn't Mm -hmm. like earn earn the weight to like carry the rest of the movie that way i guess Hmm. and uh but that being said technically it is just like absolutely incredible it looks amazing and uh, as a technical aspect of the film oh yeah yeah and like the sound design is really good and like yes parts of the score so good. are like you know whatever but parts of it are just like just cherry you know just like strike in that tone oh fantastic yeah. the performances are good and like for all the, of my complaining it's like still way better than all the you know shitty big mo- it's like I'm still watching like an almost three hour long slow paced sci-fi movie in a theater yeah. that's it's playing like every theater in the country so it's cool totally and it was great in imax too oh especially yeah the sound when, yeah when, at my theater every one of the the classic zimmer was the the screen would yeah. literally vibrate like it was vibrating really? the projector yeah it's like wow it was just like a little and when it started because there's that type at the beginning you know like explaining yeah. like what the blade runners are or whatever and it shook and i was like is this some weird animation like playing off the zimmer was here <laughs> And it was like, nah, it's just that projector rumbling up there from <laughs> the sound. Seriously. It's crazy. Um, but yeah, that's, I don't know. That's funny. What are you giving it there, bud? Or did you have another well, thought? Well, one more thought before we get to that. Um, 
what do you think about possible sequels? I think I'd be fine with just like leaving it right here. Like, I don't need yeah. to know about. I don't need to know about the revolution. I don't need to know about the replicant kind of mm-hmm. rising up. Like, then again, I love this. I love this world, and I love how this world building was. It felt so realistic, and I liked being in this world. Totally. Um, and that in that headspace too. I just it's a cool place to be, but I don't know if if we got a sequel after this i don't know if it'd be beneficial you know i don't Mm -hmm. there's more you could obviously extract but i don't think it's necessary i think i'd rather just move on yeah from this point i agree and like even though you know i thought the movie was pretty good and like it it one of my problems that i feel like it didn't necessarily justify being blade runner that much so, like, I don't know if I need another one, because I don't know how that yeah. would either. It's not like, it's not like I have any, like, burning questions that it's like, why can't this just be answered? You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I, totally. And they wrap it up nicely to where it doesn't, you know, mm-hmm. we see Ryan Gosling die, so his character's done. And then Harrison Ford, he's reunited. Rick Deckard is reunited with his daughter. Like, we have a full arc there, so it's just like... Just leave it alone. Although it's like, I I can see where you're coming from about it not having to be justified as a Blade Runner. As a fan of the original, it was cool to come back here. But oh yeah, totally. I think again, like let's just move on from here. And mm-hmm. Denny Villeneuve, just make it your own like original sci-fi. You know? Yeah, exactly. It's uh, at the end of the day, it's like could have been way worse and i wasn't like upset and i don't think it like ruins the original one you know yeah totally and it's like that could have easily been the case so i actually think this movie is better than the first one you think it's better than the original blade runner yes whoa bold claim bud i think it is bold claim and uh, and i have rewatched it recently Mm-hmm. Before I watched this one. Yeah, which cut? And I think the final, final cut. Yeah. It's a good movie and it's a it's you know, it's a classic and I always consider it that, but it's definitely aged mm-hmm. in a negative way. Um it doesn't feel as ground I mean, I don't want to say it doesn't feel as groundbreaking, but it just feels aged and it feels like we're just not we've evolved past kind of that headspace of where that movie came from and it inspired so many things and that's why i respect it and i love it still but like i said things like harrison ford's performance some of the plot points like i feel like the movie may be a tiny bit overrated and yeah i mean looking i yeah. mean so i mean i agree that it's kind of overrated like i definitely really like it but in the yeah. scheme of like my favorite movies or like my favorite sci-fi movies it's not one that like i would immediately jump to you know what i mean like yeah it's no fucking alien even like in in the like ridley scott even like more you know yeah yeah but uh i agree interesting better than the original all right i think so so what you giving it pal four and a half Ooh, four and a half damn yeah, nice. four and a half, buddy. It's a pretty solid movie. Pretty I'm uh, solid. I'm I'm giving it a three with the oh. stipulation of that I'm excited to rewatch it and think it can go up. But three hurts a little bit, man. Three hurts. Three hurts. Three hurts a little bit. Why? <laughs> Three hurts. What is three hurt? It's better than a three, man. It's better. I don't know, than a three. man. It just <laughs> my feeling leaving it was was uh. Was you think a three. it's just okay? You think it's just yeah? It's I fine. think half of it's really good and half of it's fine. You know. I mean, I guess that's fair to say, but. So it's like it's a it's a heavy three. Yeah. I definitely will. I'll just admit that my four and a half stems a lot from just my fandom. Of no. the property. Yeah, no, for sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. And a lot of that, too, is uh, 
just the atmosphere and the, the the feeling of the movie take the plot everything out of it like i'm just a fan of that i'm just a fan of like sci-fi kind of that world alone so that also boosts it um but i don't know it it if the second what with the second watch and maybe even with t- as time progresses it could reach a five i think it could get yeah. to a five it has that I'm, potential i'm i'm ready to see this thing again like i don't know if i'll go to the theater right away but like yeah i do feel like part of my enjoyment could have been stilted because like i was like trying to th- figure out like i clearly missed that scene that like led him there i was just like i don't get why he's here like this seems convenient. You know what I mean? I was like questioning the logic yeah. of things so much that I think maybe it interfered with my enjoyment. I, so. I should have just like let it ride, but I don't know. I was just, I was fucking loving it. Just like, look, we we're all like looking at each other like this shit's fucking amazing. You know what I mean? And yeah. then, and then when it was over, I was like, all right, I get it. You know, I don't know. Yeah. I get you, but I think I sometimes struggle too, like, of, especially we do this podcast too, like sometimes being critical versus just like letting things kind of be, Mm. I don't know. It's just like, it's a great movie. I didn't, I, you know, I can judge it as much as I want, but I enjoyed it. I had a great time Mm. and I, I'm glad it exists, so. For sure, that's that's kind of where I lie. Um, but yeah, I, I'm I'm probably gonna see it not this weekend, but the weekend after. I might go see it again. Nice. You going IMAX uh, again, or you going standard? Not sure. I'm gonna go with my dad, who I got oh, him nice. to watch the I got him to watch the original recently. So I was like, you, you gotta watch this so you can watch the new one. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna go see the new one with him nice, somewhere. Nice. So yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing it again. Hell yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm there. I'm there when that blue comes out, you know? I'm fucking... I'm popping on that thing. I'm watching it. I'm watching special features. That's one of those movies where you gotta blast it, too. Mm-hmm. You know? Like, that sound's gotta... Go all the way up. And that's what was great about IMAX. Just, like, yeah. the... It was crazy. Just the swelling drones of music... The mm-hmm. sound effects of the gun, you know. Yeah, it's great. The sound was really good. It's a great. It's a very interesting thing too, because it's such a great Hollywood blockbuster. Yet it's so like slow and methodical compared yeah. to like any other blockbuster that we'll we'll ever probably see again. You know what I mean? It is. I I do appreciate it on that level. That like it's I I do think it's better than a lot of the stuff just because of what it like aspires to be you know what i mean it's aiming for a higher bar than yeah. other things like around way it. higher yeah and it follows the beats like the beats of a story of like an of an old 80s movie like like blade runner mm-hmm. not a lot of crazy action just kind of a mystery slow just taking its time totally. atmospheric science fiction so gotta love that um all right well that's gonna conclude our review of blade runner 2049 as always you can find other episodes of this podcast on itunes apple podcasts google play stitcher youtube you can follow us on facebook twitter if you enjoy the show please consider leaving a review on itunes Every rating brings us to more listeners, and it really does help. You can email us at listen to us rant about movies at gmail.com. Thank you to our producer, Sean Pierce. You too can be a producer and or supporter of this podcast by visiting our Patreon page and becoming a monthly subscriber for as little as $1 per month. Visit www.patreon.com slash L-T-U-R-A-M podcast. That's going to do it for today. Zach. Wes. Good times, buddy. For show, for show. Until next time. Until next time. Take care.